Luna the Matchmaker, Chapter 6 Unexpected Developments by Stephen Little My Little Pony and All Associated Characters are copyrighted by Hasbro. Heavy clouds hung over Ponyville, obscuring the morning sun as it rose to start a new day. Strong gusting winds blew rain horizontally, the drops of water exploding against any obstacle in their way. A cacophonous crash of thunder caused the ground to tremble. The branches of the trees that housed the Ponyville library groaned as the weather's onslaught beat against the Arbeal building. The torrent of wind and rain caused the balcony door of the library's master bedroom to slam open, waking Twilight Sparkle from her inherent slumber. The lavender unicorn mare stumbled out of bed, hitting the wooden floor with a hollow thud. Composing herself as best as she could, she walked over to the balcony and shut the doors, wincing at the soreness in her hide quarters and the throbbing in her head. Twilight sat there by the doors for a moment, watching the pony she loved through slightly blurry eyes. She could still remember the day Luna told her that she'd stay with her in Ponyville. Celestia was happy, but certain members of court, along with the new head of the Royal Guard, Commander Stormwing, objected, but Princess Celestia set them straight. Luna stirred in bed when she couldn't feel her unicorn next to her. Twilight, is everything all right? Princess Luna asked from the warmth and comfort of their bed, yawning. Everything's fine. The storm just blew open the doors is all, she said, shaking her wings out to straighten her wind-tussled feathers. Walking slowly, the unicorn staggered to the bed and crawled back in, slipping herself between the purple satin sheets. Ow, oh, my head hurts. Why'd you let me drink that much? Don't blame me. You're the one that wanted to play the dictionary drinking game last night. The midnight blue unicorn stated, her own head aching. Now that Twilight was more awake, she could feel a strong and familiar yearning building inside her. Wrapping her forelegs around her lover, she pulled herself closer to the princess. Luna reciprocated by folding her wings around the lavender mare. The midnight blue unicorn loved embracing her mate like this. Even in her hungover state, Luna could tell something was off. Something just didn't feel normal. Her train of thoughts was interrupted by Twilight nuzzling against her, nipping at the nape of her neck. Hmm, Twilight, don't stop, the royal unicorn moaned. The thought never crossed my mind, love, Twilight said. The lavender unicorn gasped as Luna massaged her star-shaped cutie mark on her flanks. Luna smiled. My, aren't we sensitive this morning? I'll show you sensitive, Twilight said mischievously, as she ran her right front hoof down Luna's chest, across her stomach, and down between her thighs. Both mares stared at each other in shock. Twilight's hoof came in contact with something that ought not be there. The mares threw off the blanket they were under. There, between the princess's haunches, was a stallion's scrotum, prepuce and emerging colthood. Startled by her appearance, Luna scooted back suddenly and fell off the side of the bed. Twilight rushed across the bed. Luna, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine, Luna said, sitting up. The princess noticed something poking out from under the bed. Sliding it out slowly, she shook her head when she read the title of the book. The Big Book of Sex Magic, she said under her breath. Twilight, darling, how do you feel about folds? Oh no, don't tell me. Afraid so, she said, holding up the sick spell book with a black cover. That is, unless you can think of any other way I could have a stallion's, um, appendage. I can't think of a better explanation, especially since you're obviously in heat again and you just came out of Estrus two weeks ago. Trust me, I've noticed, she said. Well, this explains why my hindquarters are so sore, Twilight flopped back on the bed. I can't believe this. How could I have been so stupid as to cast a spell while drunk? What's worse, I involved you in my recklessness. Twilight, I've read the spell. Both parties have to be willing or the spell doesn't work. It's apparent that neither of us can remember last night, but either you or me brought it up and we must have both agreed to it. The lavender unicorn was pressing heavily, holding her aching head in her front hoofs. Twilight, what are we going to do about this? I don't know if there's anything we can do about this, she said. Luna was shaking visibly. Hey, are you okay? I don't know. I'm a little scared right now. 
We've only been together for three years. Are we really ready for this? Twilight patted the space next to her on the bed. Luna crawled back in and lay next to her. It's going to be okay, I promise, she said, cuddling up to the midnight blue unicorn. I hadn't planned on talking to you about it yet, but I've been thinking about it a lot lately. You have? Luna asked. How long have you been thinking about children? The last few months, actually. I just didn't know how to broach the subject. Talk to me, Twilight. Why the interest in a foal all of a sudden? Luna asked, stroking her mate's mane. I'm not getting any younger, Luna, and you're not immortal any more. I want us to be able to know our grandchildren before we depart this world. I always assumed we'd have a foal sometime. I just wanted to know when. I wished you would have said something before we had this mess to deal with. Luna regretted her words the second she said them. Twilight pushed herself slightly away from the princess and looked her in the eye. You mean you don't want to have a fall with me? She asked, her eyes filling with tears. Luna hugged the mare tightly. Of course I do, sweetheart. I just wish we had this conversation while we were both sober and could recall everything. Twilight begrudgingly accepted the answer and nuzzled back against her mare friend. So it's obvious to me that we already did the deed. What now? Before we do anything, I think we should be sure you are pregnant first. A simple pregnancy test will prove that. But from my experience with Lyra and Bonbon, bon, it's almost certain that I am. Do we tell every pony or do we wait? I think for now we should keep it to close friends and family. At the very least, we should tell my sister. She'd be overjoyed to know about a new member of the family. I think we should tell our friends too, and then see where it goes from there, before we let any pony else know. I'm afraid of what any pony else would say. Even if I'm not an alicorn anymore, there is still a level of decorum expected of me, and getting another mare pregnant is not one of them. I don't want you to misunderstand. I love you, and I will love this new life we made together, but I'm afraid of what others might say. Twilight kissed her mate. I understand. As long as I'm with you, I'll never let anything happen to you ever again. I love you, Twilight. Twilight wasn't listening any more. She was busy nuzzling against her lover. You know, it's a shame neither of us can remember what happened last night. What? Luna asked, shocked at Twilight's comment. The midnight blue unicorn looked down at her maid, lying next to her. Twilight's face was flush and she was breathing heavily. I'm sorry, Luna, I can't fight it any more. I need you. Twilight said as she was wrapping her forelegs around Luna and kissed her passionately. Breaking the kiss briefly, Luna rubbed her soft velvet nose against Twilight's. You have nothing for to apologize for, my love. Twilight was still breathing heavily. In that case, since you still have that thing for at least another twelve hours, why don't you come over here and show me what all those other mares are raving about? It took most of the morning, but Rainbow Dash and the rest of the Ponyville weather team finally cleared away the remainder of the clouds from the previous night's storm. Clearing up the last small clouds, the Cyan Blue Pegasus saw Princess Luna and Twilight walking by Sugar Cube Corner. Hey guys! How are you doing this morning? Or is it afternoon now? Good afternoon, Rainbow Dash, Luna said with a smile. That was some storm last night. Yeah, sorry about that. It kind of got out of control a little, but we made sure it wouldn't cause any major damage, Rainbow explained. Hey, Dash, do you think it's possible for you and Sauron to meet us later at Sugar Cube Corner? We have something to tell both of you and the rest of our friends, Twilight asked. No problem, Twilight. What time? She asked. In about three hours. Would that be okay? The light purple unicorn asked. Sure thing. We'll be there she said as she sought off after the rest of the weather team. Luna looked at her maid. Do you really think it will take that long? I don't think so, but there's no certainty on how long we might wait or how many other ponies may be ahead of us. All right, well then, let's go see if you're a mother, Luna said. Hey, if I'm a mom, so are you, Twilight informed her. Fluttershy and Big Mac walked into the lobby of Sugar Cube Corner with Caramel and Applejack and greeted their friends. Morning, Brayburn, Soren. You boys know what this is all about? Big Mac asked. 
I'm as clueless as you are. Twilight sent a letter to Pinky that said she and I were supposed to be here at this afternoon, Brabant said. Rainbow told me the same thing. She talked with Twilight and the princess earlier and they asked her to bring me here. We woke up to a letter on our dresser saying the same thing, Bonbon said, Lyra nodding in agreement. We got a letter too, Fluttershy said. Where's Rainbow Dash and Pinky? The two ponies in question came trotting into the room with a tray of confections balanced between them. Hey guys, check it out, Rainbow Cupcakes, the Pegasus said as she and Pinky placed a tray of cupcakes with Rainbow Frosting on the table in front of the friends. I think I'll pass, Soren said. Don't you want to have a little rainbow cake? Pinky asked. Oh, uh, no, that's okay, I'll have some later, he said, looking at his mare friend. Rainbow Dash blushed. Rarity and Spike walked into the confectioners with a hurried look on their faces. Garnet, their three-year-old son, was walking beside them, staring in awe at the tray of cupcakes on the table. Hello, all. I assume you're all here for the same reason? Rarity asked. The ponies in the room all nodded. I hope Twilight hurries. We still have to get packed for Philadelphia, Spike said as he handed over one of the cupcakes to his son. The other ponies in the sweet shop smiled and laughed softly as a very young unicorn buried his face into the treat. He likes sweets almost as much as I do, Pinkie Pie commented. That reminds me, could you take him while we're gone? I promised Sweetie Belle she could have her friends over while we're gone and I don't think she'll have time to watch Garnet. He's become such a hopeful. Sure, Rarity, Brassy, and I would love to watch him while, we're, while you're gone. Pinky said, picking the foal up and wiping his face. Twilight and Luna walked into the store, smiling brightly. I don't see Ditsy or the doctor. Does any pony know where they are? Twilight asked. I think Ditsy had to cover some pony's shift at the post office, Rainbow Dash said. We can inform them later if you want, Luna said. Inform them of what? What's going on, Twilight? Applejack asked. I'm pregnant, the Lavender Unicorn shouted happily. Yes, I knew it! Lara hollered out. A pair of eyes had been watching the entire scene play out inside the sweet shop, taking in everything. The Pegasus they belonged to watched as the princess and her unworthy consort were embraced and congratulated by the other ponies in the shop. The display disgusted him. As soon as he was sure he had what was required, the mysterious pony vanished into the shadows. The sun was starting to set, and the streetlights of Canterlot began to flicker to life. Down below Canterlot Castle housed the royal dungeons where no light could reach. A solitary unicorn guard and a mottled Pegasus stallion marched down the corridor of cells. The guard approached the cell at the end of the row and banged his hoofs against the bars. Prisoner 4528, you have a visitor. A ragged unicorn stallion rolled off the cart in his 3x3 three three meter cell. Thank you, dear sir. You may go now. My associate and I have much to discuss. The guard sneered at the prisoner and stalked down the hall. You have ten minutes. Don't waste them, he called back. Both stallions watched the guard walk down the corridor and around the corner. Report. Did you get what I needed? Yes, my prince. It is exactly as you said. Princess Luna and her concubine have produced an offspring. I knew it. I knew it was only a matter of time before the traitor betrayed her station as well as her ponies, and now we have this unworthy offspring as proof of this perversion of the crown. You see me, faithful lieutenant, this is what happens when you let females run things. Do we move now, then? No, not yet. We have to let the other one slip. I already know her favorite statue is empty. Her demon will inevitably show up, and when they tip their hoof, I'll be there. But, Prince, how long must we allow you to languish here? he asked. Patience, my dear Shadow. If one thing this place has taught me, it's patience. I'll be out of here legally soon enough. Until then, wait. The two stallions could hear the guard returning. Be patient, my faithful subject, and soon we will be elevated to our proper place in this world. The guard returned and escorted the prisoner's guest towards the exit of the cell block. Inside the dark dungeon cell, the prisoner smiled for the first time in four years, his light blue eyes shining brightly behind his solid blue mane. 
Back in Ponyville, two fillies were having a sleepover in the apartment above the carousel boutique. Scooter Lou tossed her sleeping bag in the corner of Sweetie Belle's bedroom. I can't believe Rarity and Spike are ha letting you have a sleepover while they're away in Philadelphia, the orange pegasus said. Rarity didn't want to, p but Spike talked her into it, she said. It's too bad Apple Bloom got sick. I was hoping we could all work on getting our cutie marks during the sleepover. We are going to be graduating from school soon, and we're still blank flanks. I'm starting to think we'll never discover our special talents. Scooter Lou bumped the teenage unicorn with his shoulder. Hey, don't start talking like that. Remember when I thought I'd never learn to fly, right? Now look at me, captain of the junior versus pizza team. Sweetie Belle pushed back against her friend. I guess you're right. Well, there are plenty of other things for us to do, she said, trying to change the subject. So what do you want to do? the orange pegasus asked. The white unicorn's stomach grumbled loudly. I think we should have dinner. Spike said he left something for us in the fridge, she said. Race you to the kitchen. The two teenagers raced out from the room, down the hall. Just as Sweetie Belle was about to enter the kitchen, Scooter Lou grabbed the unicorn's tail with her mouth and pulled her back so she could sprint to the finish line. Hey, that's cheating! What are you, a rule book? Better than being a chicken, Sweetie Belle shouted. I'm not a chicken, Scooter Lou yelled as she launched herself at the unicorn. The two mares rolled around on the living room floor. They came to a stop with Scootaloo standing over her, her wings spread out triumphantly. Ha ha, I win! Oh yeah? Sweetie Belle said as she tickled the pegasized sides with her hoofs. Scootaloo tickled the unicorn back, both of them laughing heavily. Sweetie Belle moved her hoofs up to her friend's sides, tickling at the base of Scootaloo's wings, between the small downy feathers. The pegasized eyes grew wide with shock as her wings got shot straight up. She quickly stepped off the unicorn, shaking her wings to force them go down. Are you okay? I didn't hurt you, did I? The unicorn asked, concerned. Scootaloo blushed. I'm okay, really. That spot is really sensitive on a pegasus, she said, folding her wings. The orange pegasus was intentionally averting her eyes away from her friend. So, about food? You sure you're okay? Sweetie Belle asked, picking herself off the floor. Yeah, I'm just hungry, I guess, she said as she walked into the kitchen and sat at the dining room table. The white unicorn knew something was bothering her friend and promised herself that she'd find out what it was before the night was out. Sweetie Belle followed her friend into the kitchen and opened the refrigerator door. Rummaging around, she found a baking pan covered in foil with a note attached to the front. She pulled the container from the refrigerator and set it on the table next to Scoodaloo. What's this? the orange pegasus asked. Grabbing the note from the pan, she began to read aloud. Dear Sweetie Belle, I made these for your sleepover. I hope your friends like them as much as you do. Love, Spike. P.S. Reheat in the oven at 350 degrees for 15 minutes. It's not as good as freshly made, but I think it should be fine. Sweetie Belle tore the foil off from the pan, revealing six green roundish objects with a white and orange topping. All right, my favorite, she shouted. Scootaloo poked one of the objects cautiously with a hoof. What are they? she asked. Dragon peppers, Sweetie Belle said enthusiastically. Spike mixes rice with cheese, broccoli, carrots, mushrooms and cauliflower. Then he stuffs it all into bell peppers and roasts them with his own dragon fire. Wow! I know, this is gonna be the best sleepover ever, even if Apple Bloom can't be here, the white unicorn said as she sets the oven to the appropriate temperature. Sweetie Belle walked back to the table and sat down next to her friend. So, we have a few minutes to wait till the oven's ready. Are you going to tell me what happened back in the living room, or are you still going to pretend nothing's going on? What are you talking about? Scootaloo asked. Oh, come on now, Scooty. I think I know when something is bothering one of my best friends. The oven preheat buzzer went off, and the white unicorn walked over and placed the tray of peppers in the oven and set the timer. Well? she asked, sitting back down at the table. It's nothing. It's stupid. I don't want to talk about it, Scootaloo said, turning away from her friend. Sweetie Belle put a hoof on her friend's shoulder. Hey, come on, you can talk to me. It can't be that bad. The orange pegasus shrugged off her hoof. Leave it alone, Belle. I told you, I don't want to talk about it, she said through the tears forming in her eyes. Hey, don't cry, she said softly. 
Please tell me what's a going on, please. Scootaloo spun around and faced her friend, the tears rolling down her cheeks. I like you, okay? She yelled. I sort of really like you. You know, like more than just a friend. She got up from the table and walked towards the living room. I'll leave if you want me to. She set her back to the unicorn. It took you long enough. Was it really that hard? The orange pegasus spun around to see her friend smiling sweetly at her. You knew? You knew and didn't say anything? The oven timer went off and Sweetie Belle got up and used the pot holder in her mouth to carefully pull the pan from the oven and set it on the stove top. Yep, I've known for more than a little while now, ever since Rainbow Dash said she'd adopt you. Remember that talk we had the day after about some stuff you said while you were half asleep? When you denied everything, I asked Twilight and the princess what I should do about it. I was worried about you. A lot of things was going on. Princess Luna said I should let you make the first move and only confront you about it if things started to get bad or awkward. So all this time, and now I mean, do you... She half asked, wiping the tear from her face. Yeah, I like you too. I was worried I'd be an old mare before you said anything. Dinner's ready, by the way. You still hungry? Yeah, Scootaloo said, smiling. Dinner was quick, but Sweetie Belle declared it a success. Scootaloo enthusiastically stated that the dragon peppers were the best thing she'd ever tasted. Come on, let's go into the living room and talk. About what? the pegasus asked. What do you think? the white unicorn asked. You didn't say more than two words at dinner, and if you think I'm letting you off the hook that easily, you have another thing coming, Scooty. As the two teenagers walked into the living room, the doorbell rang. I'll get it. You just sit there and wait for me, and I'll be right back. Sweetie Belle walked downstairs and opened the door. Special delivery for Rarity Filigree, Ditsy Doo said. Mrs. Ditsy, why are you here so late? Sweetie Belle asked. Oh, hi, sweetie. One of the other male ponies was sick, so I had to cover his shift. I'm really mad. I missed Twilight's announcement, but Applejack told me, and I'm really happy for her. I'm not quite sure how it happened, but I'm glad Twilight's going to be a mummy. Either way, Rarity's out of town right now, but I think you have the wrong address. Our last name is Swenson, not Filigree. Are you sure? I've picked up letters from here that were signed Filigree, and Rarity has received letters with the same name, the grey male mouse said. I think you should hold on to the package for your sister. When she comes home, if it's not for her, just let me know and I'll pick it up. Okay, Miss Ditsy. Sweetie Belle took the package from Ditsy and went back inside. Once upstairs, she set the package on the edge of the table. What's that? Scootaloo asked. I don't know. It says it's for some pony named Rarity Filigree, Sweetie Belle told her. But I thought the last name was Swenson. It is, the unicorn said, walking around the table. Just before she sat down on the couch, she accidentally bumped the table, knocking the box off the edge. That can't be good. Scootaloo said as she picked up the box and set it back on the table. You don't think there's anything breakable in there, do you? I don't think so, she said, looking over the box. I don't see a fragile stamp, and all it says on the box is our address and the return address to Canterlot, but no street number or name or anything. You think we should open it? Scootaloo asked. What if something's broken? Well, Sweetie Belle said with a mischievous look on her face, It would be just plain wrong if my sister ordered something and it arrived ruined. I think it's our duty to make sure it arrived intact. So White Unicorn ran to the kitchen and grabbed the knife and walked back in. She very carefully cut the tape, set the knife down and opened the box. The entire box was filled with papers, files and various little toys and knick-knacks. Sweetie Belle lifted out a fancy-looking pass of hire. What's all this? It looks like baby stuff. Now I know this isn't for rarity. Wouldn't be too sure about that, Scootaloo said as she flipped through the various pages of documents. A lot of this looks like doctor's files, and they all have Rarity's name on them. That doesn't mean it's my sister, though, the white unicorn said. No, but this does, she said, sliding a picture over to her. It, it is Rarity. Is that... You are so cute as a baby, Scootaloo said, smiling. That's really me? Look how young my sister is. She can't be much older than us. Scootaloo didn't say anything. Hey, Scooty, look how messed up her mane is. Scooty. The Pegasus wasn't responding. Sweetie Belle looked over at her friend. Scootaloo sat there, staring at a rectangular piece of paper she held in her hoofs. 
Her eyes were wide, small tears rolling down her cheeks. Scooty, what's wrong? The Pegasus looked up from the paper to her friend, then back to the paper. Panicking, she hit the paper behind her back. It's nothing, she said between tears. Scootaloo, are you all right? What's the matter? The unicorn asked. I can't, I don't, I can't tell you, she said, wiping her face. Why not? Scooty, what was on that paper? Sweetie Belle asked. It's nothing, just forget about it. That paper, it's not true, it can't be. Sweetie Belle used what magic she had to levitate the paper out of Scootaloo's grasp and floated it over to her. The orange pegasus lapped at her. No, Sweetie Belle, please don't read it. The white unicorn dodged to the side, avoiding her friend, and looked at the paper. Along the top of the paper it read Manhattan General Hospital. Below the header was a small title, Certificate of Birth. It's a birth certificate, Sweetie Belle continued to read, but what she saw next stopped her cold. Full name of foal, first name, Sweetie Belle, middle, Angela, last, filigree. Father of record, not available. Mother of record, first, rarity, middle, platinum, last, filigree. Sweetie Belle dropped the birth certificate and dived into the box, quickly reading a page, throwing it aside, then reaching for another. It can't be true. It just can't be. The frantic unicorn pulled out picture after picture of rarity with an infant Sweetie Belle cradled in her hoofs. At the bottom of the box was a sealed envelope with rarity's name on it. She ripped open the envelope and started reading. Rarity, this will be the last time I converse with you. You refused to give up the baby for adoption and have instead decided to go it alone. Get used to that. You are alone. Your father and I will not be there to bail you out. I warned you, and I already tried to contact fall protection services, but they say you don't have a daughter, just a sister. I have no idea how you were able to convince them of such an obvious deception. I suppose you and had Carlton lie for you, but I just don't care any more. How could you do this to us? Your father and I have been mortified ever since you told us you were pregnant. The whole town knows that you not only had a foal out of wedlock, but you had one with a lowly earth pony. How could you? Were you so stupid as to not even consider your father and I what this would do to us? We can barely show our faces in polite society any more. Everywhere we go there's nothing but gossip about us and our low-class, worthless, stupid child. I searched around the house and found everything of yours that was left. Be happy that I chose to mail them to you instead of burning them. Goodbye, daughter. May you be able to live with your poor decisions. It's true. It's all true. How could she lie to me like that? Sweetie Belle looked up at Scootaloo with a mixture of despair and uncertainty. Was it me? Did I do something wrong? Was she ashamed of me? Didn't she want me? She asked. Scootaloo hugged her tightly. I'm sorry, Belle. I'm so, so sorry. Why didn't she want me? Wasn't I good enough for her? I think I'm going to be sick. Sweetie Belle broke out of Scootaloo's embrace and ran to the bathroom, slamming the door behind her. The Pegasus could hear her friends throwing up her dinner. Scootaloo looked through the files and pictures, trying to find answers for the unicorn. She looked intently at all the pictures. Each one showed a very happy rarity with her baby. The files she read were all medical files, but one was a petition for adoption. The paperwork had been filled out and signed by Rarity's mother as a preparer, but down at the bottom some pony wrote that the baby would not be given for adoption due to the mother's insistence that she kept the foal. So Rarity did want to keep Sweetie Belle. She picked up the letters the unicorn had read and looked it over. What a bitch, she saw to herself. Wait a minute. Scootaloo read the letter again, paying special attention to the first part. Scootaloo ran to the bathroom and knocked on the door. Sweetie Belle, are you okay? Can I come in? Sweetie? She pushed the door open to find Sweetie Belle hugging the toilet. The Pegasus walked over to her quietly, sobbing friend. The white unicorn sat back against the tub. Vomit soaked her chin, neck and chest. She walked past her friend to the tub and flung open the shower curtain. Reaching over, she started the warm water from the shower, then went to pick up her friend from the floor. Come on, up we go. It's time to get you cleaned up, she said. Don't want to, Sweetie Belle said. Yeah, well, I didn't ask if you wanted to, Skuru said as she dragged her friend into the tub and under the shower's warm water. 
and rinsed the bile from her coat and down the drain. Making sure there was no debris in the tub, she put in the plug, turned the shower over to the faucet and turned up the heat. As the tub filled with water, Scootaloo grabbed the bottle of shampoo, popped the cap and worked the soap into the unicorn's fur. Don't worry, I'll get you cleaned up in no time. What's the point? My own mother doesn't want me, she said. That's not true, Belle, Scootaloo said. What an equestria gives you the idea she didn't want you. I don't know, she said sadly. There has to be a reason why she told every pony I was her sister. She didn't want me as a foal, but she couldn't get rid of me either. I'm fourteen years old, almost fifteen. If she really wanted me, she'd have... The orange pegasus cut her off. Belle, I looked at those files and pictures. Did you know that Rarity's mother tried to first force her to give you up? She refused. Every one of those pictures shows Rarity very happy holding you. She loved you, Belle. She still does. I'm sure of it. Really? The white unicorn asked. Yeah. When we're done here, I'll show you. She said, carefully rubbing the soap into the fur of the unicorn's neck. I think I know why Rarity never told every pony what she did and treated you like her sister. Why? Why would she do that? Sweetie Belle asked. That letter from Rarity's mom. She said that she told full protection services about Rarity. Your sister, I mean your mom, convinced them you were her sister, so they left you two alone. If she didn't, they would have tried to take you away. I think Rarity lied to them, to you, to every pony, just to make sure no pony would take you away from her, she said, turning the water off. But why would they do that? Rarity has almost always been nice to me. Sure, we had a few problems here and there, but nothing major, Sweetie Belle said. Remember the pictures, what you said? Rarity looked as old as us. She was only fourteen or fifteen when you were born. Do you really think they would let some pony our age raise a foal by themselves? I think this was the only way Rarity could keep you with her, Scootaloo said. So what are you going to do about all this? Are you going to confront Rarity about it? I don't know. I don't know what I should do, she said. Scootaloo leaned in and kissed the unicorn's cheek. No matter what you decided to do, I'll always support you and back you up, okay? Sweetie Belle blushed. She turned to her friend and kissed her lips, both ponies sinking into the warm water. Inside the Ponyville library, four months later, twelve mares hid in the dark, glued to the front windows. Where are they? Ditsy, are you sure you saw them coming home? Rainbow Dash asked. Sure, I'm sure. Maybe they stopped for a snack or something, the grey pegasus supposed. I see them, I see them, and they're coming this way, Apple Bloom said excitedly. Okay, every pony, hide, and when they come in and turn the lights on, we jump out and yell surprise, Pinkie Pie said. Pinkie, I hate to break it to you, but this ain't a surprise party, it's a baby shower, Applejack told her. It's still a surprise, Ditsy and Pinkie said in unison. They all heard the latch on the door click loudly and hid wherever they could. I'm sure it's fine, Twilight. If there was a problem, I'm certain my sister would say something, Luna said as they entered the library. Suddenly the lights came on, and twelve mares jumped out of nowhere and yelled surprise. Twilight and Luna looked around the brightly lit room, decorated with blue and pink streamers and balloons. What, what is all this? Twilight asked. It's your baby shower, dearie, Mrs. Cake said. Sorry, it's a bit late, but we had to explain to Pinky the difference between a birthday party and a baby shower. I hope this is okay, Twilight. We just wanted to celebrate your fall with you and, your, and the princess, Fluttershy said. It's wonderful, Fluttershy. Thank you. Thank you, every pony, Twilight said. I just wish I had a chance to eat before the party. I'm not really hungry for cake and sweets right now. Sorry. Well, that's okay, Twilight. We've got all sorts of stuff here, Lyra said. Luna pointed towards the buffet set up against the far wall. Hey, Twilight, look, melon. Oh, goody! she said as she made a bee-line for the orbs of fruit. Off in the distance, Rarity could be heard arguing with Sweetie Belle. Leave me alone, Rarity. I told you earlier that we are going to sleep over at the clubhouse, the young unicorn said. But you girls don't have to leave now, do you? the older white unicorn asked. I thought you girls would enjoy a party. What do you care? It's not like you're my mom or anything. Stop trying to act like her, 
Sweetie Belle shouted before running out of the library, followed close by Scootaloo and Apple Bloom. Rarity moved to chase after her, but Spike put a claw up to stop her. Don't, Rarity, let her go. Whatever face this is, she's going through, it's clear she wants to be alone with her friends. But what she said, you heard what she said. Rarity said, choking back tears. Is everything okay? Princess Luna asked. What's wrong with Sweetie Belle and my other crusaders? I don't know, Luna, Spike said. Ever since we got back from that last show in Philadelphia, she's been distant, withdrawn. The only ponies she talks to any more is you and the other crusaders. The other two aren't much better. Is there any way you can talk to her, try and find out what's going on? I've tried, but she won't even talk to me. All right, you two stay here with Twilight and I'll go talk to them. If something is bothering my little crusaders, I'll get to the bottom of it, Luna told them before leaving the library. Spike led Rarity over to one of the sofas in the pit, where Twilight was happily munching away on Melon, surrounded by the other pony mothers at the party. I'll be fine, Spike, I promise. Why don't you go hang out with the boys at the farm? I'm sure Big Mac and the others are having quite the time by now. Okay, Rarity, but if you need anything, have Twilight sent me a letter, Spike said. Or you can ask me. I'd be more than happy to contact Spike for you, Princess Celestia said, walking up next to them. Princess, I'm so happy you could attend. I wasn't sure if you'd be able to make it, Bonbon bon said. I wouldn't miss it, Celestia said. One of the perks of being a princess, you can reschedule things no, and no pony really complains too much, she said with a wink. Spike politely bowed to the princess, then ran out the door and headed towards Sweet Apple Acres. Well, at least he can't get drunk on cider. Something tells me the other boys will be passed out before the night is over, Rarity said. Princess Celestia walked over to Twilight, still enjoying her snack. Hello, Twilight. I see the cravings have started. Twilight looked up and quietly wiped her face. Sorry, Your Majesty. It's quite all right, Twilight. I'm sure if you ask your friends here, they went through the same thing when they had their faults, the princess said. Oh, she's right, Twilight. I couldn't get enough tomatoes when I was pregnant with the twins, Mrs. Cake said. There were times I thought I went through Ponyville entire supply of pickles, Bonbon bon told her. I suppose you had cravings for muffins, right, did see? Nope, corn, corn cakes, cornbread, cream corn, corn soup, anything made of corn, did see said, smiling. I thought I'd blow up a balloon with all the apple pie I was eating, Rarity volunteered. You see, Twilight, it's perfectly normal. Enjoy your snack, we don't mind. I'm wondering, though, where is my sister? In the orchards of Sweet Apple Acres, Apple Bloom and Scootaloo were trying their best they could to comfort Sweetie Belle. Are you all sure about this? I mean, I believe you all, and... But it's just... Wow! Apple Bloom said. I saw it myself, Bloom. There was no mistaking it. Rarity is Sweetie Belle's mom. Scootaloo informed her. Please, Bloom, don't tell any pony, Sweetie Belle begged her. Well, all right, but I can say I'm comfortable about it, the majoring farm pony said. All three of the young mares rushed to the window when they heard the loud flapping of large wings. Princess Luna, they gasped in unison. Crusaders, please assemble before me. The three ponies rushed out of their clubhouse and stood at attention before their princess. It has come to my attention that you three have been having problems with your families lately. Scootaloo, Rainbow Dash has informed me that you've taken to leaving your home early in the morning and not returning till late, even missing your flying practice. Apple Bloom, Granny Smith had noticed that you've been getting in fights with your older brother. Ah, uh, we weren't getting into fights. We were just sparring, you see. The princess glared down at her, silencing her interruption. Sweetie Belle, ever since Rarity and Spike returned from Philadelphia, you've been withdrawn and shot with both of them. Do you three have anything to say for yourselves? The three teenage mares stood there, scuffing the ground, none of them willing to speak. I see. Well then, maybe I should send you three away for a while. What? They shouted in unison. Well, it seems to me that you three could use a change of scenery, and since you don't want to talk to me, then I am forced, as your princess, to intercede. The three of you will travel to Cantalot tomorrow to undergo training to be my junior personal guard. 
It will be the most difficult nine weeks you've ever had, but I believe the discipline and structure you'll receive will be good for you. Sweetie Belle, you'll be training with Sergeant Eclipse. He's a very talented unicorn and well-versed in combat and defense spells. You'll learn a lot from him. Scoodaloo, you will be under the tutelage of Lieutenant Gusty. He was once offered a spot in the Wonder Bowls, but turned it down to serve as a royal guard. I'm sure you'll find his instructions quite useful. Last but not least, Apple Bloom. You will receive officer's training from Commander Stormwing. The Pegasus, who has taken over command of the Royal Guard since Shining Armor's resignment as a bodyguard to Princess Cadence. The commander is a wealth of knowledge. I suggest you pay attention to him when he speaks. In addition to this personal training, each of you will be schooled in the proper behavior befitting a member of the Royal Guard, Luna informed them. I will be speaking with your teacher tomorrow. You'll have to make up for the time at school, but I'm sure you three are up to it. Can I count on you three to perform to the best of your ability and behave like proper royal guards in your training? Yes, princess, they answered in unison. Good, in that case, you'll be needing these, Princess Luna said, draping a necklace over her head for each of the mares. The chain of the necklace was sterling silver, with a stone of dark purple emblazoned with a crescent moon. These necklaces are a symbol of my office. When you wear them, you represent me. Do me proud. Yes, princess, they answered again. Wow, every pony, this chapter was, oh my gosh. I mean, I enjoyed it. It was a really good chapter, but uh, what I seriously did dislike was that package from Rarity's mom. I mean, how cruel can you get? Yeah, I mean, my mom is dead, but... And I had a fight with her over the last years before she died. But seriously, she even she wouldn't have done such a thing. I don't know anyone who would do something like that. But I think, okay, the people I know are not really that snobbish as her mother sounds. Okay, Ripony, stay with me for the next chapter. Stay tuned. <sighs> have a sincerely U.S. visual pony.